So, okay, this is a G-Tech Leaf Blight. It's the original, the very first one. I think they call it LB01. But there's only three things involved. A battery, a switch, and a motor. One of them will need replacing. The part with limited life is the battery. A battery is about half the cost of the leaf blower. Four quadrants light up, it shows the battery is fully charged and when I tested between terminal one, the plus sign, and the other side, minus, I had 41.4 volts. There's nothing wrong with the battery and the terminals I push together slightly here with a small screwdriver to ensure they make good contact, but they're clean, there's nothing wrong with them. Pull the trigger, it fires the battery, but no leaf blower. The switch is working. So we're gonna take this little baby apart. Uh, essentially the back needs to come off and then the handle assembly. So the battery's disconnected. We'll need to attack the screws with this. It's a hex screw or an Allen key. A long Allen key will be needed for the back because the holes are recessed. On top you could use the Allen key or you could use um, a weak electric screwdriver. Beware, electric screwdrivers have so much torque or power, they could break the plastic. So we lift the back away, careful not to break the lugs because there are four lugs that stick out. These do break with vibration. In fact, I've only got three out of the four still intact. Next, remove this inner skirt, which comes out very easily. And we hope the motor hasn't actually gone wrong. Ease the handle assembly away with a little nudge, but be careful, there are wires to the motor. Now we remove the motor, which is four screws, one in each corner, and then just pull it free. Now we discover what's broken. A cable has come off the motor, probably with the vibration or the torque as the motor starts to twist and stops. There you go. I could say that's not rocket science, but there are people who put wings on these leaf blowers and make them into aeroplanes and rockets. I jest you not. Look on YouTube. Anyway, we now have to solder this cable back onto the motor and I'm sure it's going to work. Unlike their other appliances, G-Tech actually only list on their spares a battery, a charger, or buying the complete whole unit once again as a body. Remove the battery before soldering any electronics. Make sure any of the brittle copper is broken away so you get really down to something quite tough. And then with a blunt blade and only working away from you and being very careful, just scrape it so the copper, shiny copper, comes clean. If you're not familiar with soldering, it's probably best to leave it to somebody else. But the idea is that everything has to be clean and both joints need to be hot. The solder needs to run freely and you hold it still while it cools down. It was insulated and it's good practice, so I have actually taped it. But I'm also going to put a piece of tape to hold the two cables together. Two together, twice as strong. So it's time to test, and it works. It works without spinning off the table, and it's time to put it together again. Note there is a slit in the side of this plastic. That's for the cables to go down. Put it all back together, and it fits a treat. If you love a great thriller with some pumping action and twists and turns that keep you wanting to go on to the next page, then Cruise Ship Heist is probably the book for you, and it happens on a cruise ship. My name's Stuart St. Paul. I've been a director, I've written lots of screenplays, but this is my first novel, and it all takes place on a cruise ship. This is the kind of view that every cruiser is used to, leaving a port. Well, in this book, they leave a port 
but with millions of pounds on board that isn't theirs. And that's where it all starts to go wrong. Cruise ship heist.